This is the key entry in terms of doing history logging. Now there's many ways to do this. This is just one example. You could, for example, set up another list called history in reference to that list from this list. And if you're expecting a heavy volume of log entries, that might be more appropriate. This example should work in examples where there isn't going to be lots and lots of updates to the list record. So in the code solution, we provide some HTML and CSS that you can use. And you can experiment with this and add your own values to get the styling the way that you want. Once you've hit an update, you can get a little bit of a validation of whether you have your formatting correct. In our case, we want to use some padding and a border around this, as well as highlighting the workflow action. And we want this to be kicked off whenever the workflow action is selected. Select is the blank value in our case. So now we're set up for logging and we can take a look at how this works. We now have a history tab and this is going to show me a history of workflow action changes that have taken place. And you can see that we can see the date timestamp, the user, what action they took, and the note that they included in there. We'll go ahead and uh, put in our own just to confirm that this is working as expected. So I'll go ahead and set to complete, and I'm just going to mark a note in here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. This will change the status to complete. And when we go into the history, any user can now see that I was the one who set this to complete. And you can see my entry with the date and timestamp says that I set this to complete. And you can also see my note. Everything looks like it's ready to go. And you can see we have a nice border around this. Otherwise, these log entries might kind of run together a little bit. So this history function works really well with the user-facing workflow section. So these would be two types of functionalities that fit very well together.